introduce myself. I am Shackle. Colonel of the Royal Guard of Pomerania and Livonia, Field Marshal of the Prophetic Royal Coat of Arms Ministry, and Knight of the Sacred and Military Order of the Prophetic Royal Coat of Arms Ministry. And today, we are going to be starting a new book. We are going to be studying the book of Timothy. So if you will, open up your Bibles, get your notebooks out, and take notes, and follow, and let's open up with a word of prayer. Go! Dear Yahweh, Atona Elohim, we come before you and we ask that you would anoint us and empower us to do your will and purpose for our lives. We ask in the name of Yeshua Christos, name to the power of the Holy Ghost. Heal us mentally, physically, and spiritually. Move us into the apostolic and the prophetic. Anoint us. Teach us your truth. Grant us that word of wisdom concerning the subject. Make my preaching and teaching acceptable to you. I ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christos, the power of the Holy Ghost. Let revival break out worldwide. In Christ Jesus' name, the Lord, to the power of the Holy Ghost, amen. Well, I'm pleased to mention my promotion, Archbishop Archduke Robert Edson decided to ordain me and grant me the title of Archduke Field Marshal of the Prophetic Road Coat of Arms Ministry and Knight of the Sacred and Military Order of the Prophetic Road Coat of Arms Ministry. And the Grand Duke is thinking about perhaps next month to elevate me to Archduke of Pomerania and Livonia. Phil Marshall of the of Livonia and Knight of the Sacred Military Knight of the Sacred and Military Order of Merits of Livonia. I just have to pray and hope. And if it's God's will, then it will be granted and ordained. Nonetheless, we're starting a new book. We're starting to read the book of Timothy. Chapter 1 we'll be looking at today.
And in the book of Timothy, we have an intimate peak of the Apostle Paul's relationship with Timothy. And in the book you can see the passion and intimate relationship that they had for one another, that they really cared and loved each other. And since of a father son type relationship. Nonetheless, those out there that are part of this ministry that I bring forth to you by the will and purpose of God be praying to God asking that his will be done asking God to ordain and grant and elevate me to the title of Archduke of Pomerania and Livonia Field Marshal of Livonia Knight of the Sacred and Military Order of Merits of Livonia, if it's God's will. If not, happy with what I got. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. Introduction. Without trying, we model our values. Parents in particular demonstrate to their children what they consider important and valuable. Like father, like son, is not just a well-worn cliché. It is a truth repeated in our homes and experience proves that children often follow the lifestyle of their parents repeatedly repeating their repeating their success and mistakes <clears throat> Timothy is a prime example of one who was influenced by godly relations His mother, Eunice, and grandmother, Lois, were Jewish believers who helped shape his life and promote his spiritual growth. The first second generation Christian mentioned in the New Testament Timothy became Paul's protege and bishop of the church at Ephesus as a young minister Timothy faced all sorts of pressure conflict challenge from the church and his surrounding culture to control and encourage to counsel and to encourage Timothy Paul sent this very personal letter. Paul wrote Timothy just to buy his prior to his final Roman imprisonment because he had appealed to Caesar. Paul was sent as a prisoner to Rome. Most scholars believe that Paul was released really 
possibly because the statute of limitation had expired. And that during the next few years, he was able to travel during this time. He wrote Timothy and Titus soon. However, Emperor Nero began his campaign to eliminate Christian Christianity. It is believed that during his time, Paul was in prison again and eventually executed. During the second Roman imprisonment, Paul wrote 2 Timothy, Titus, and two letters to Timothy. Comprise what are called the pastoral letters. Paul's first letter to Timothy affirm their relationship. Paul began his fatherly advice warning Timothy about false teachers and urging him to hold on to his faith in Christ. Next, Paul considered public worship, emphasizing that in the importance of prayer and order and order in church meetings, this leads to the discussion of the qualifications of church leaders, bishops, and deacons. Here, Paul lists specific criteria for each office. <clears throat> Paul speaks again about false teachers telling Timothy how to recognize them and respond to them. Next, he gives practical advice on pastoral care the young and old, widows, elders, slaves. Paul concludes by exhorting Timothy to guard his motives, to stand firm in his faith, and to live above reproach, and, and to minister faithfully. Finally, Timothy holds many lessons if you are a church leader, take note of Paul's relationship with this young disciple, his careful counsel and guidance. Measure yourself against qualifications that Paul gives for bishops and deacons. You are a young, young in the faith, follow his example of godly Christian leadership like Timothy who imitated Paul's life. If you are a parent, remind yourself of the profound effects a Christian home has on family members. A faithful mother and a grandmother led Timothy to Christ and Timothy ministry helped change the world. 